Just a minute feels more like just an hour? Well, here are Lulu's rules about time. One second. That's how long it takes when you knock over your mom's unicorn lamp to when your tattletale sister screams, Mom, Lulu broke your favorite lamp. One hour is what the doctor really means when he says, it'll only hurt for a second. Ow! One day, that's how long a week at the beach feels like. And one week is what the drive to the beach seemed to take. One month, that's how long you're usually grounded for breaking unicorn lamps. And one year, that's probably how long it's been since your teacher smiled. Everyone so mushy today. Happy Valentine's Day, <gasps> Lamb Chop. Ooh, you big ham. I forgot. It's Valentine's Day. You forgot because you don't get Valentine's, Lulu. Not like me. See how many I got? I do too get Valentine's, Gloria. Last year I got the biggest Valentine in school. Yeah, but it was a funny one. No one would send me a funny Valentine. <laughs> Because you have no sense of humor. You just wait, Lulu Moppet. This year you'll see how popular I am. That'd make a swell Valentine present. If a boy gave me such a beautiful box of chocolates, I'd just have to give him a great big kiss. That'll be two dollars. Oh no! My money! It's gone! I had two bucks! I wish there was some way to get more Valentines than Gloria. Wow, two dollars! Hey, this is your chance to show up Gloria. Go buy a big box of chocolates and tell her they're from a secret admirer. Now, Lulu, that's not the Valentine spirit. But I lost my two dollars. Honest. Sorry, son. No cash, no candy. All right, all right. Here you go, Willie. Oh. You must have dropped this outside. Gee, thanks, Lulu. Now I can buy these chocolates for Gloria. Gloria? Now that wasn't very smart, was it? <laughs> thanks, Lulu. If there's ever anything I can do for you. Now's your chance. Ask him to give you a Valentine. Do you think that's what Valentine's Day is all about? I'm not gonna ask him for a valentine. Let's see, who else can I get to give me a valentine present? Hi, Gloria! What you doing? Oh, nothing. Just admiring these beautiful flowers. Well, see ya. <gasps> oh. You know, Iggy, if a boy gave me flowers like these, I'd invite him over to my house for milk and cookies. Oh, boy! Milk and cookies with Gloria! What's the meaning of this, young man? Iggy, haven't you finished planting those flowers yet? Hello, officer. We're planting flowers for Valentine's Day. Oh, my gosh. It's Valentine's Day. I forgot. I don't have anything for Mrs. McNabb. Thanks. And keep up the good work. Phew. Thanks, Lulu. How can I ever pay you back? Don't blow it this time. Ask him for a Valentine gift so you can rub Gloria's nose in it. 
Well, Iggy, there are some pretty wildflowers in that field over there. Maybe you could... This is not good. Wow! Gloria would love those! What? Gloria? Again? <laughs> Somebody loves me. Somebody loves me not. Somebody loves me. No one loves me. Of course not, because everyone loves... Lulu! You're just the gal I wanted to see. You know how it's Valentine's Day and everything. Well, wanna dance? Oh, Tubby, yes! I'd love to! One, two, three, ow! One, two, three, ay! One, two, three, ee! One, two, three, ouch! I think I'm getting it. Whoa! Careful! Gloria said if I bring her the biggest heart, I can take her to the Valentine's dance. You mean... Yeah. Thanks for showing me how to dance. If there's anything I can do for you, just you ask. Don't even think about it, Lulu. Think about it. Think about it. I guess Gloria was right. The boys do like her the best. Here are the chocolates you asked for. I'm ready for my kiss now. These flowers are even nicer than the ones you asked for. Hey! You didn't say you invited all the boys for milk and cookies. Okay, Gloria. I made that heart you wanted. Wait a minute. What's going on? You asked us all for something? See? She asked for Valentine's. And look at her. Surrounded by boys. But she just tricked them. That's not the way to be noticed. I oh, can't she believe sure sucked what us in good. Yoo-hoo! Lulu! See how many Valentines I got? And you didn't even get one. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Happy, Happy Valentine's, Valentine's Day, Day, Lulu! Lulu. These, These are for you! you. Huh. Oh, Do you like the flowers, Lulu? The They're real the pretty, oh, huh? Aren't the chocolates See, Lulu? Now? Being nice to people does pay off. It sure does. This is Gloria's idea of a fun sport. Jumping, cheering, and flapping pom-poms. And she does this while Tubby and the other boys play football and get their teeth kicked, their shins whacked, their bottoms booted, and their bodies bruised. Hey, maybe I should ask the coach to let Gloria try out for the football team. You know that story with the princess who falls into a deep sleep for a hundred years and then a wandering prince finds her in the middle of the forest and kisses her? It's so unbelievable. If she's been sleeping for a hundred years, we're talking serious morning breath. He's not gonna give her a kiss. He's gonna give her some mouthwash. Do -be -do -be -do. <gasps> trick is called walking the dog. Cut it out! Hey, stop that, creep! Quit it! You could bonk her nose! Uh, mind your own beeswax. Look at what I caught! Yow! Let go of my yo-yo! <laughs> this trick is called walking the Wilbur. Now let's do winding the Wilbur. You're wrinkling my expensive Rene Puto outfit! Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Shh. Butterflies are tricky, especially that purple-spotted summer flapper. 
Wow! We caught a yellow-bellied rich Wilbur! I guess when you're rich, you can afford to be a weirdo. Huh? I'll get even with those girls if it's the last thing I do. Thanks for helping. I'm Lulu Moppet. I'm Gertie Greenbean. That kid sure was yucky. Wilbur Van Snob thinks he's hot stuff just because he's the richest kid in town. I'm sure glad you skated by when you did. I was trying to find a bookstore, get the new Wendy Blake mystery. Wendy Blake's my favorite! In fact, I've got the new one at home. Mom, oh. can Gertie stay for dinner and sleep over? Uh, we want to read uh, Wendy Blake and uh, the mystery of the missing uh, mademoiselle together. Why, of course you can stay. If it's okay with your mother, Gertie. Here, give her a call. I can't phone my mom. Come on, I'll show you why. My mom's a traveling saleswoman, so she drives her trailer all over the country. So, Gertie lives in a trailer. That gives me an idea how I'll get even. How nice of you to invite Gertie. Come back in the morning and I'll have a delicious breakfast for you. My father's a big shot. I'll get him to do my dirty work. My first step is make myself look like I've been beaten up. Weirdo Wilbur's really gone off his rocker. <laughs> it's a filthy ragamuffin. Cranberry, throw it out. Unhand him. Oh, those are my son's clothes. Now, what have you done with our son? I am your son. <laughs> a big kid beat me up for no reason at all. Horrors. They've torn your fashionable Rene Pujol shirt. It's a new kid who, <laughs> who lives on Maple Street in a trailer. A trailer? How convenient. That will make it easier to run that hooligan out of town. I'll speak to my friend, the mayor. He owes me a favor. <laughs> then Wendy Blake pointed her finger dramatically at the suspect and announced that Wesley La Snoot is guilty beyond a shadow of a doubt. Oh, Wendy Blake is so clever. Uh-huh. <sighs> oh, Lulu, it must be great being able to go to sleep at night without worrying about waking up to an oil leak. You're lucky. You're the lucky one. I wish my house had wheels. It'd be so much fun. <laughs> Gee, Gertie sure is lucky. lucky. Wait till you taste my mom's brambleberry pancakes. That Gertie should have known better than to tangle with me. <laughs> what? It's gone. Where's my mom? Don't worry, we'll find her. Looks like your mother ran out on you. Ha <laughs> ha, I don't blame her. Don't talk that way about my mother. You want to fight me? Ha, huh, you're nothing but a scrawny girl. Voila, voila. <laughs> Oh, boy, a fight. Hey, stop it. Hold it, Gertie. Uh, keep that left in his face and dig your right into his ribs. At least Wilbur's not beating himself up anymore. Please. I give up. Mother, you're back. I was so worried. I had to drive it away. Seems some big shot named Van Snob made a complaint. And why are you beating up that boy? Because he's Wilbur Van Snob. Well, then go to it, Gertie. Ah! Bye, Wilbur! Ah! Bye, Bye, Wilbur! Bye, Wilbur! yourself on the way home! <laughs> <laughs> I'll get even. One day, I'll get even! I say, are you there? What have you done with my son, Wilbur? That's his bicycle. Dad... It is me, Wilbur. Good grief. Why don't you stay away from those bigger boys? It sure was nice of your mom and dad to help us like this, Lulu. It was very thoughtful. And it looks like we both made some wonderful new friends, Gertie. Lulu's book of world records. The fastest animal in the world is my dog when he hears the can opener. 
The slowest animal in the world is my dog when he has to go to the vet. The fastest person in the world is Tubby when he hears the ice cream truck. The slowest person in the world is my dad on Sunday when there are chores to do. The fastest vegetable in the world is the pea because they can really fly off the spoon. The most meatballs ever eaten all at once, 16, dad, last Sunday. Most time ever spent in the bathroom, two hours, dad, last Sunday. The softest thing in the world is my bed. And the hardest thing in the world, my mom says it's my head. I guess with all these muscles, I just don't know my own strength, Miss Clefmeister. Try to relax, Tubby. Music should soothe the savage beast. It's even worse. The cat's trapped inside a violin. I'm so happy. I finished all my homework at Annie's house, and now I have the rest of the day to myself. Whoa! Whoa. Ain't life grand? Oh, I hope I got everything I need at the market. Rat, I forgot carrots. Huh? Oh, no, George's favorite pipe. Well, it serves him right. Smoking is such a filthy habit. There. Now, back to the market to get those carrots. To watch TV, or to play with my paints, or to smell the roses. Hmm, those are the questions. Hello, Lulu. Please chop up some onions while I go back to the market. Yes, Mother. And be careful in the kitchen. Be careful in the kitchen, as if I was some kind of baby. I'm not a baby, I'm a kid. Gosh, from sniffing flowers to crying over onions in less than a minute, where's that towel? There it is. Uh-oh. Yikes. I busted Dad's best pipe. Mom will jump for joy, but Dad's gonna jump through the roof. Hello, I'm home. I'm getting out of here. Miss Clefmeister was awful nice to let me out early. I'm getting so good, I only need half a lesson. Ouch! It's me, Lulu, up in the tree. What are you doing up there? Hiding. I broke Dad's best pipe and he just got home. What'll I do, Tubby? How about climbing down? So your neighbors don't think I talk to trees. What a weird it's boy. It's talking to a tree. What's going on? Oh, all right. That's not very He's exciting. Still a weird boy. Lulu, there's nothing to do but face the music. Hey, speaking of music, Miss Clefmeister says that music soothes the savage beast. So? Where is my pipe? When a wild animal hears sweet music, it gets tame as a kitten. So if you play while I tell Dad about his pipe, he won't get mad? I bet you he'd even tell you to clam up so he could hear me better. <laughs> I know where you are. Has anybody seen my pipe? Is anybody even home? Lulu, have you seen my pipe? Don't answer yet, Lulu. Are you her lawyer? <clears throat> okay, Lulu. You can answer him now. It's about your pipe, Dad. You see, I was peeling an onion for Mom when... Not one more note, Tompkins! I'm only a little boy who doesn't know what he's doing. Now, about that pipe, Lulu. 
I was peeling an onion for Mom when... Stop! And no more encores. I'm just an innocent little kid who loves music. Now, Lulu, do you or do you not know what happened to my pipe? I was peeling an onion for Mom when I got some in my... Oh, why you come back here when I get my hands... <laughs> that put a good scare in him. Lulu, do you have any idea what's gotten into your father? He's mad because of his pipe. All that for the pipe I broke? Well, I'm happy about it. Now we'll all breathe easier. Now, Lulu, for the last time, where's my pipe? Like I've been trying to explain, Dad. Mom has something to tell you. Huh? Hey, this wood gives me an idea. If I can make Mr. Moppet understand how Lulu feels, maybe he won't be so hard on her. That was sure nice of you to forgive Mom for breaking your pipe, Dad. As if I had a choice. But I guess I shouldn't have chased Tubby like that. I hope he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I stepped on my violin and crushed it because you were chasing me, Mr. Moppet. Oh, no, Tubby, it's not Dad's fault. It's my fault. No, it's my fault. <laughs> but Mom broke your pipe, Dad. Oh, it was your mom. Well, good thing that I didn't break my violin. Oh, I get it. Uh, I don't. Well, you see, Dad, I thought I broke your pipe and was afraid to tell you. So Tubby came over with his violin and... What? Oh! Ah! Better get your violin again, Tubby. The savage beast needs some more soothing. Oh, right. Have you noticed you always hear about cavemen? Cavemen did this, cavemen did that. But you never hear about cave women. You know why? I think it's because women didn't live in caves. There's no way a woman would have been dumb enough to spend all day washing rocks, sweeping dirt floors, and banging her head on low-hanging backs. I bet while all the cave fellers were crowded together in caves trying to see who had the hairiest back, the women were all nice and comfy in their brand new Stone Age houses. But that doesn't mean cavemen weren't smart. They did, after all, discover fire but only because they were lucky enough to be in their cave when it was struck by lightning. Oh! <laughs> 